Last weekend, SpaceX conducted a static fire test on the upcoming Starship Super Heavy prototype. Despite this not being a novel occurrence, it managed to captivate an audience of millions across various social media platforms because it marked the inaugural utilization of the new water deluge system beneath the launch pad during the ignition of the Starship's engines. So how does the water deluge system improve the test? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX tested the new and upgraded deluge system, but no engines were fired earlier this month. The true test of the deluge system could only be performed when the booster engines were thrusting heat downwards. And this finally happened. SpaceX performed a static fire test on its Starship Super Heavy Booster 9 rocket last Sunday. This test was performed with all all 33 engines installed on Booster 9, or B9 for short. SpaceX has shared a set of dramatic images captured during a recent static fire test of its super heavy vehicle, the most powerful rocket ever built. They showed off the astonishing strength of the rocket's 33 Raptor 2 engines that will blast the super heavy skyward on its second test flight following a failed effort to reach orbit in April. According to SpaceX, only 29 engines functioned successfully during the test. The rest of the four were shut down for either technical reasons or did not fire at all. In comparison, earlier this year, Booster 7 successfully fired 31 engines in its static fire test before the first Starship orbital flight attempt. As a safety measure, Boca Chica County released a notification to the residents of the Boca Chica Village area to remain outside of their homes during this massive test. Since, as before, this was a full-spectrum static fire test using all 33 engines, such an impact can shatter window glass. The test only lasted for about 13 seconds, with the Raptors only firing for about 2.7. Booster 9 was loaded with liquid oxygen and methane as propellant, which is needed to fire the engines of the booster. B9 was locked on the Starbase orbital launch mount, and SpaceX first triggered the deluge system that threw a huge amount of water underneath the OLM. Then, the 33 engines were fired for the static fire test. The villagers of Boca Chica Beach had to endure the inconvenience for this short period. SpaceX runs a siren across the village during any major Starship test to alert the residents. Luckily, the water deluge system made this test more environmentally friendly. In fact, this platform transformed that dusty static fire from Booster 7 into a very clean looking event for B9. It's quite the improvement over the last static fire we saw, vastly. And as we can see in this video of the Booster 9 static fire test, massive clouds of mist formed around the OLM. But it's white, not opaque brown like before. This happened due to the sheer amount of heat thrust on the water coming out of of the deluge system, vaporizing it. All that water turned instantly to steam, which was amazing. There was literally no sign of dust, and there's especially no more concrete rain like before. Nope, no debris. Aside from that, I've heard stories that said that the firing wasn't nearly as loud at a distance as it was on the first flight test, so the steam really cut a lot of the energy. With the initial pictures of the OLM after the Booster 9 static fire test, the OLM seems to be in good shape with no peel off. SpaceX is now in the process of installing the remaining shielding onto the orbital launch mount. There's no launch pad damage around what we saw after the first Starship flight test. Booster 9 is also intact after the test. So, the new Starship OLM water deluge system is apparently a successful experiment by SpaceX. However, 29 engines firing for 2.7 seconds, 2.7 seven seconds does not fully demonstrate the full potential of a full thrust in a launch attempt. Perhaps SpaceX will need to eject water from under the OLM for a longer period in a live flight test, and for that, we'll have to wait for the next static fire. The recent test of the Starship water deluge system comes after several delays and technical challenges. Such systems are critical components of any rocket launch, and SpaceX's meticulous approach to testing ensures that all safety measures are thoroughly 
thoroughly evaluated before proceeding with full-fledged missions. The successful test marks a significant milestone in the development of the Starship rocket. SpaceX's commitment to innovation and continuous improvement is evident in every aspect of its space exploration endeavors. From pioneering reusable rocket technology to developing cutting-edge launch systems, the company's dedication to pushing the boundaries of space travel has garnered widespread recognition and admiration. Throughout all of these tests, the production site is essentially non-stop, working on future boosters and ships 24-7. Ship 25 was moved back to the production site on August 6th, where it will continue its preparations including finishing heat shield installation and inspections following its static fire test in June. Booster 9 was also back at the production site. Ship 28 was moved back from the Massey's test facility after undergoing a thrust simulation test. The next step for this vehicle will be Raptor installation followed by engine testing of its own. In short, SpaceX certainly doesn't let any time go wasted while they test and iterate on current and future designs on Starship. Going fast is definitely important not only for SpaceX, but the whole of the United States in the space race. During a press briefing on the upcoming Artemis II mission, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson compared China's controversial claiming of the Spratly Islands to what could happen if the country beats the U.S. and its allies in developing a lunar base. They go out and claim some international islands in the South China Sea, and then they claim them as theirs and build military runways on them, said Nelson. So, naturally, I don't want China to get to the South Pole first with humans and then say, this is ours, stay out, like they've done with the Spratly Islands. The Artemis II mission, which would see NASA fly a manned craft around the moon for the first time in five decades, is currently scheduled for launch in November of 2024. Unlike the Apollo missions, which all landed on the side of the moon facing Earth, the Artemis missions will eventually culminate in a landing at the moon's South Pole, where ice can be found. That ice could supply water to NASA's planned lunar base. Nelson noted that much of the South Pole consists of deep craters where little to no sun can reach, making those areas effectively useless for manned bases and enhancing the value of territory that does receive sunshine. We want to make sure that that's available to all, not just the one that's claiming it, said Nelson. While the relationship between the United States and Russia remains strained over the latter's invasion of Ukraine, Nelson said that NASA maintains a good working relationship with its Russian counterpart. Roscosmos. The two agencies continue to cooperate aboard the International Space Station. Nelson added that he believes China's planned mission to the moon are well ahead of any possible Russian mission. Neither Russia nor China are among the 28 countries that have signed the non-binding Artemis Accords, which call for peaceful cooperation and promises of aid between signatories. I don't think that a lot of people at this point would say that Russia is actually ready to be landing cosmonauts on the moon, said Nelson. I think the space race is really between the U.S. and China, and we need to protect the interest of the international community. The briefing came a week after the crew of the Artemis II completed a training mission with the search and rescue team that is tasked with extracting the astronauts from their Orion capsule after splashdown back on Earth. The crew had also recently gotten their first in-person tour of the space vehicle that will be their home for the mission, which is planned for 10 days of spaceflight. During the mission, the astronauts will orbit the Earth immediately immediately after the launch to conduct several safety tests before setting course for the moon. Once there, they will conduct a lunar flyby before returning home. The mission will be an important dress rehearsal for Artemis 3, currently planned for December of 2025, which will involve landing astronauts on the moon for the first time since 1972's Apollo 17 mission. And that's all, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.